Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Watford. I'm a software consultant in the UK with my company Watford Consulting. Uh, we provide software development and system integration services to help customers modernize processes. Um, I've been building software for about 20 years in, in embedded in enterprise systems, but only came to SharePoint about five years ago. Um, I really quite liked how it took care of a lot of the busy work, things like access control, storage and search are all ready to go. Come forward a few more years and I find SharePoint has just got easier to work with, with SharePoint Online, the framework and PMP JS uh, helping us with solution development. So today I'd like to demonstrate the uh, a web part I've created for the SharePoint framework, um, which will help explore the relationship between users and groups in SharePoint and the Azure Active Directory. So. As an example of where we might want to better understand the users and groups in SharePoint, uh, we can take a look at uh, a simple solution to process purchase orders. In this list, we'll create rules specifying the maximum purchase order value that a member of staff is allowed to approve. If a staff member submits a purchase order with a higher value than the solution uh, value, the solution will then pass the purchase order up the management chain as an approval request. Once the purchase order is approved, relevant notifications can then be automatically sent to other departments such as finance and purchasing. Um, each rule applies to multiple users and groups specified using a person or group column. Uh, for display purposes, I've added an additional column to the list with some formatting to show the IDs for those users and groups that have been selected. These are the site users and site group IDs that we'll explore in this talk. So the solution, if, the solution needs to determine if a purchase order limit rule applies to a particular user. Um, to do that, we'll need to find all the IDs used to identify the user and their groups on the site, in other words, their multiple identities, and then match those against the IDs stored in, in the rule. So what are SharePoint site users and site groups? So here we have two users, AAD user one and AAD user two, along with two groups, AAD group one and AAD group two. Normally, we think of users and groups at the organizational level, managed using tools like Azure AD, like the Azure AD portal or the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. These same organization users and groups are available in the SharePoint site where we can refer to them in people or group columns or assign roles to them. But once the site needs to refer to a user or group, it doesn't continue to reference it uh, by any sort of Azure AD identifier. Instead, it maintains its own list of site users mapped from those Azure AD security principles. An important thing to note is that the Azure AD security groups are mapped to a SharePoint site as site users, not site groups. SharePoint site groups are created and managed on the SharePoint site. Site users, in, uh, including those mapped AD groups, can be assigned as members of a site group. Here I have a bunch of users. This diagram shows the users and security groups defined in my Azure AD for my tenant. The arrows indicate that Diego, Alex, Adele, and Azaya are members of, of some security groups. Within the same tenant on my demo SharePoint site, I have the have defined two SharePoint site groups, SP Group 1 and SP Group 2. Grady and AD Group 1 and AD Group 2 have been assigned as members of those site groups. Assigning those memberships has caused creation of AD Group 1, AD Group 2 and Grady site users. Adele, Henrietta and AD Group 4 have been assigned read permissions on the site directly, causing the creation of their corresponding site users. So note that Alex, Diego, and Isaiah do not have corresponding SharePoint site users. Their only relation to the SharePoint site is through their direct or indirect relationship of AD group uh, memberships of AD group one and AD group four. So let's take a look at how these users and group memberships can be surfaced by the user and group information web parts. Over to the demo. So here we are at the homepage of my demo SharePoint site. We're on the SharePoint site, we have the user and group information web part already installed. The web part defaults to displaying information for the current user. So here we can see my users Azure AD information from the Graph API and my SharePoint site user information from the SharePoint API, both retrieved using PMPJS. So let's go ahead and select a site user. Here we see our three test users, Adele, Grady, and Henrietta, alongside my own user, and then some system users. Let's choose Adele and then under group information, we can see that Adele is known to the SharePoint site as the Adele Vance principal, which has a principal type of user. Adele site user is not a member of any SharePoint site groups. We also see that Adele is a member of Active Directory groups one and group two. The site users representing these organization level groups have the security group principal type, 
and are themselves members of SharePoint Site Group 1 and SharePoint Site Group 2. Let's have a look at Henrietta next. So here we can see that Henrietta is only recognised by the by the site as a Henrietta Muella user principal type. She is not recognised as a member of any organisation groups from Azure AD or any SharePoint site groups. Let's have another look at Grady. So Grady is recognised by the Grady Archie user principal type, and that user principal is a member of the SharePoint SP Group 1 uh, site group. Rather than selecting from existing sites, a user and group information web part can also search for users to find an active directory. So we can give this a try by searching for Diego. Since Diego is not a site user, I'll just whiz back here. No. Um, since he's not a site user, there are, is no SharePoint site user information to display. However, he can still be identified by the site as a member of AD Group 1 with the security group principal type and also via the AD Group's membership of site group SP Group 1. Now we'll take a look at Alex. So like Diego, we can see that Alex is not a site user. Uh, Alex can be recognised by the site as AD Group 1 uh, with, with a security group principal type, uh, even though he's not a direct member of that organisational group. So here we see that Alex is a member of AD Group 3, which is a nested member of AD Group 1. SharePoint's not, not aware of AD Group 3 at all. Uh, now we have a look at Isaiah. In Isaiah's case, in Isaiah's case, we see that it's only recognised by the site due to his membership of AD Group 4. We can also use the user and group info web part to look at uh, user and group profile information. So if we go back to Adele, we can click on the various IDs, principal names and site groups to access her profile pages. So for instance, we'll click on Adele's user principal, we'll get taken to her Adele's profile. If we click on uh, one of her AD groups, we'll get taken to a user information uh, page. So this, I think, hopefully demonstrates that we're actually looking at a site user rather than a site group in the case of Active Directory groups. And then if we go and click on the SharePoint site group, we'll go and see the, the members list for that site group. Now we're going to take a look at the code. The user and group information web part is implemented using the React framework. Its top level React component is a function called user and group info, which holds a top level state for the web part. This state consists of references to two lookup services, one for accessing Azure AD and one for accessing SharePoint. It also stores a state for the currently selected user's email address and or site ID. Uh, and then it also tracks whether a user is currently selected at all. The only place that state is updated is in the on selected user changed callback in response to selection of a site user or searching for an organization user. These state changes will cause components to be re-rendered with new data. User and group information is rendered using child components, user info, and user group memberships. Hopefully you can see down here in the left, this is the area of the screen that's going to be rendered by, by those components. Both child components also take the web parts context, but this is only used for populating those links we saw that took us to the Delve profile or to the group membership profile pages we looked at at the end of the demo. The user selection component rendered at the top of the page takes the web parts context, the SharePoint uh, user group lookup service and the callback. That's down here. The context and the lookup service are used by the people picker control to search for users in a tenant and to retrieve the list of site users to be selected from. The callback is uh, called whenever a new user is selected. Moving on to the user info component. The user info component is a React functional component which includes two promises in its properties returned from the SharePoint and Azure AD lookup services. As each of these promises resolve, the two sections, user users Azure in AD information and SharePoint site user information will be rendered just about here. As each of the promises, um, the Azure AD promise is created by the Azure AD lookup services get AAD user function. This function includes some basic caching using maps, should probably be swapped out for a proper caching library. Um, but the main work of calling the graph API is done by the PMP JS before us. Here we call two different methods depending on whether an email address has been supplied 
Uh, if no address is supplied, we'll assume that the current user's information is wanted. The SharePoint user group lookup service enables us to retrieve site user information for a site with the given site user ID. Although not needed for rendering the user info component, the lookup service also goes and uh, retrieves group information for, for the site user. We do that so that we can cache it for use later while we're rendering the bottom part of the, the screen. Once again, we use PMPJS to call the SharePoint uh, API. The user group memberships component uh, rendered at the bottom of the uh, web part. Uh, in, it, its properties include a promise to return an array of SP group membership objects. These objects define the relationship between a site group and a site user. By permitting the site group's details to be undefined um, in these objects, we can represent cases where a user is known to SharePoint, but their user principal is not a member of any site groups. Here we can see the get user memberships function from the SharePoint user group lookup service, which returns a promise of SP group membership objects we saw in a previous slide. Using the given site user ID, this function will retrieve the SP group membership objects that describe the given site user's membership of site groups. Then any Azure AD groups the user is a member of are retrieved by this next line, mapped to the corresponding site users, and then checked for membership of site groups as well. The results of these two steps are merged together and returned in the resolve promise. So let's take a look at the get SP user memberships method, which finds any site group memberships for the given site user ID. First of all, the function calls and awaits the get SP user and get SP user and members group promise, which we saw earlier. This retrieves the site user information based on the given site user ID, along with the site group membership information that we cached. You can see I've had to do a little bit of casting here uh, to try and get access to the uh, iSite group info array. I'm sure there's a nicer way to do this, so uh, any, any pull requests gratefully received. Um, depending on whether the user has been found on the site and whether it's a member of any site groups, we'll either return zero, one, or multiple SP group membership objects. And now we'll look at how the Azure AD groups are mapped to site users and checked for site group memberships. This logic is handled by the populate AAD groups as SP users function, which using the given email address retrieves the GUIDs of the Azure AD groups that the user is a member of. So here we can see recording graph.users get by ID and we'll return an array of, of GUIDs. Uh, the array of GUIDs is then used to build a filter, which, can then, which we can then select site users corresponding to the user's Azure AD groups. For every found site user, uh, we then call the same get SP user memberships function that we called earlier, constructing our array of SP group membership objects. So now we get back to the original problem for the purchase order solution. Using this last piece of code, we can now retrieve an array of all the site user and group IDs for a member of staff. So armed with these IDs, it's now possible to examine the rules in the purchase order limits list and filter those which apply to a particular staff member. So that concludes this demonstration on the user and group information web part. At this linked, I mentioned some uh, properties about site user and site group IDs and how it appears they might be stored in a single list on the site. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching, and please feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions. Thank you, Daniel. Really great uh, presentation there, really thorough. A lot of great comments there in the uh, chat. So really appreciate you doing that today. Outstanding to see those techniques.